Okay, we're trying to lay really the entire foundation of mechanics and calculus. We have trouble finding what an average rate is. Average rate of change of something with respect to something else. And I originally said of y with respect to x. So that's familiar. Yeah. Everybody really seem to know delta y over delta x. So certainly nobody knew that the instantaneous rate would be the limit is delta x goes to zero, delta y over delta x. Okay, I'm using a and b here instead of x, y and x. Uh, but originally I had y and x. And that's, of course, the definition of derivative. Okay. Now, we get down, and then what follows from this? Was all of it. Okay. And for example, you got the standard definition of the limit. Uh, of the uh, derivative, okay? Like this, of course, this. this is equivalent to this because f of x plus h minus f of x is how much f of x changes. And h is how much change there is in x, right? Because x goes from x to x plus h. So you really have to understand that at a basic level and not just going to be the algebra. And as I've said, most calculus courses are content to let people buy if they can just do the algebra and not understand anything about what it is. Okay. In my world, that's the definition of a C student who probably isn't going to make it more than a profit. Uh, but I mean, if they're really smart, they can. Okay. They just kind of slack and they can see that they're capable of easily making an egg. They can make it up in more of those calculus. Okay. Uh, so, anyhow, we have this. Now, what we're really trying to get at is you know, the question was we got this interface that gave us a graph of angular position versus time, angle versus time, the rotating problem. Okay. Average rate of change. So, that is to take three points and calculate the average angular velocities. And Having trouble with that. Having trouble with that because we don't know what an average velocity is. Okay. Because we don't know what an average rate of change is. If I gave you the velocity function, you would probably know to do the derivative, or the position function, you probably know to do the derivative. But you've got data there, you don't know what the function is. You know that this thing is rotating, you know that there's some. Inherent acceleration due to friction or other things. It's not quite a Newtonian object, and that's not really Newtonian. Newtonian rotation, okay, with no external forces. Okay, you have force of friction, you might have other forces due to the imbalance in the system. If you don't know, all you know is the data, and you don't have any idea what function. It's that data. <clears throat> Relating the course, we observe that uh, your theta versus t graph you know, looks pretty much like a straight line. But when you try to graph velocity versus t, you get some curvature, which tells you acceleration isn't constant because of all this. It goes back to this. If you don't base it on this, then you've not, you don't have any basis for understanding it. And then you get to a slap situation with what should be a pretty simple question. I'm not putting you all down. I'm just saying that, you know, it's a deficiency. It's not a difficult deficiency to fix. You just got to make sure you do it. Okay. You've got to know what the definitions are. Since you don't know the definitions, you don't know how to move from the definitions, and you never know what you're doing wrong. Okay. Of course, being able to move from the definitions is a significant skill. Knowing the definitions isn't, you just gotta know them. Okay. And you gotta kind of relate them to real world things. Uh, then uh, not only do you do better in your courses, but you become a much better engineer. Okay. I think I'm let the engineers decide what constitutes a good engineer. So I'm not an engineer. Uh, okay. Uh, we take this. 
And now we ask the average loss is the average rate of what with respect to what? Okay, I'm gonna pause and see if you can give me an answer there. Okay, I got a good answer, which was uh, delta P over delta T for P is position. Now we don't want to use P for position, we generally use it for momentum, but that's still a good answer. You can you can define it that way if you wish, but it's probably going to be confusing in the long run. So what because what do we use for motion along a straight line? Oh, that's not a good answer. Use X. So it's the average rate of X with respect to T. Okay. So now I'm going to pause again and see if you can tell me what we got for acceleration. And I'll take any symbol for the variable. But uh, if you want to use a standard symbol, that would be okay because I will. Uh, but if you got the concept, again, you can make up your own symbols. Nobody else will understand them, but you will. <laughs> then maybe translate it into the vernacular, okay? Oh, shoot. Okay, so the well, average acceleration, I have a little trouble with this. Okay, again, because we're not moving from definitions or even better from concepts. Okay, concept is the average rate of change. And just like average velocity, is average rate of change of position with respect to time. Average acceleration is the average rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Okay. Okay. Well, what about angular velocity? And think maybe about what the best symbol to use is, although I'll, I'll accept any symbol at this point. Okay, well, I got the answer of theta with respect to T, but I didn't get a good answer for what we call theta. Okay, and again, this comes back to the fact that uh, you've heard me say it many, many times, be a focus and formula. Okay. And as I said, when you're talking, try to break you out of that mold of being focused on formulas. Be focused on the concepts, basic fundamental concepts behind the formulas. Okay? Break out of that mold, you do much better. You're better able to think through problems. You don't think through a problem by matching up formulas. I mean, sometimes you do. But after you match up formulas, think what is really going on behind this formula. Okay. You won't always be able to answer that, but you'll be able to answer in some simple cases, and then pretty soon you'll be able to answer in more involved cases. Okay. You want to be thinking about that. So this is angular position. Not a symbol, it's a concept, and the concept is angular position. It's a symbol for angular position. Okay. Well, you got one more chance to achieve glory. So let's see what we can do with this one. And if you can't achieve glory, that's okay. You're doing pretty well. Okay, it's pretty optimistic that somebody would come up with a good answer, and I just got a perfect statement. So Obviously, at least temporarily learning something. Okay, you want to be sure you lock this in. So we've used this and done this many times when as a basis for doing manipulations and all that stuff, deriving the equations of motion, etc. 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 And angular acceleration is a very great change of angular velocity with respect to time. And angular velocity. Is omega. And that's a standard symbol. I don't know if I've ever seen a different symbol for angular velocity. It's pretty much universal. Okay. Doesn't give you 
guarantee we're never going to offer you the specialty or writing like in a language that's have an amazing. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are exceptions, but uh, that's the way it is. Okay, so. What's the definition of B, A, omega, and alpha? And let me actually give a little bit of context. C of T, A of T, Omega of T, Alpha. So make sure you hear the pause before you talk. Okay, we're having trouble with this answer because, again, there's a lack of understanding of what calculus really tells us. It's a limit. If delta t goes to zero, delta v over delta t. Which is this? Okay. So Okay, I, I you know, uh, this V here should be X. So X over W. I'm writing V as temporarily. I'm not thinking. I got down to here. I realized the POP was not a B prime. <laughs> and if I'd have thought about it, I'd realize it wasn't the VVP. This has to match everything in this chain of equality. Okay. Incidentally, so we have a tendency to write things that aren't even. Okay. You use train of thought, use equality for train of thought rather than for actual factual statements or actual rigorous statements. You've got to watch that. Anyhow, there it is. Okay. So, could you write me definitions of these three things? Okay, so when I ask people to write out definitions for A of T, omega of T, and alpha of T, did it pretty well. Okay. Maybe didn't write out all the details, but be sure. You can write out all the details. Also, I think I said it before, but I, I use these here, 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 and here. I think I caught that on screen. When I got to V prime of T, I know that V of T is not equal to V prime of T. And I stopped and said, oh, well, uh, what did I just do? I didn't look back at what I'd written here, right? Or think about what I know very well, okay? Wrote it out without thinking, and, and uh, you know, try to avoid doing that. Uh, you see me do it often enough, you see what pain it causes everybody. So, try not to cause everybody else, including yourself, that sort of thing. Okay, okay, well, now we're trying to apply this to you know, what we've got here to calculate the average velocity based on. Points are angular velocities. 
tangled angular position, and this is pi. So you got this graph that goes like this, and it goes like this, and it goes like this. Okay. Actually, I think it comes back up. But what we're interested in is the straight line part. The corresponds to the motion of this thing. If we attach the elastic cord to one end, pull it back, and let it snap back. I'm trying to figure out maybe if kinetic energy is conserved. Sort of okay. Now, what is it that is conserved? You ought to be able to answer that very quickly. But I'm saying it to you right now because I have a feeling that probably something needs to be very out of it. Okay. I'll ask you in a minute if you remember you know, if you have a little bit of glory in there. If not, well, that's typical at this stage. Okay. Uh, Shouldn't be very Okay, so you know we took three points. We can do this on a linear interface. So we have this graph, and we click on different values of t, and it'll read out what position was, right? So we've got three positions at three times. So we have Yeah, that's right. So omega one bar is an average angular velocity. We don't, we can't calculate the instantaneous angular velocity. Okay, we don't have an accurate velocity function to take a derivative of. Can't calculate it, and despite what this machine tells you, it can't either. Okay, all it can tell you with really good accuracy is theta versus t. So twenty samples per second. The thing wasn't moving that fast. Probably a total of, of, of uh, you know, a couple hundred data points. So, my question is in symbols, and let me move the camera. I think actually you can pretty much see everything I wrote. So, move the camera so you can see everything. Okay. What do you think? In symbols, omega one bar would be. Okay, first answer I got was theta one over t one. So theta one over t one would be the rate of change from the origin to this point. This point depends on when you where you happen to click to get the point. Also, when they get a run, it depends on how long it was before I released the point. Okay, so. Uh, that's not it. Uh, that is not an average rate of change. What is it about the definition of average rate of change that is not satisfied by theta one over t one? Okay. First answer I got was theta one over t one. Okay. Now, with all due respect, that's a terrible, terrible answer. It just doesn't fit the definition of an average rate of change. Okay. Fortunately, it's easy to correct that by a little more attention to the detail of the definition and the concept. Okay. Definition is of an average rate of change of age, like B and delta A over delta B, right? What's the A quantity here and what's the B quantity? Well, the A quantity is, I mean, you're trying to find your average angular velocity, right? It's the average rate of change of angular position with respect to time, right? Which means you have to have a change in angular position and a change in time. Okay. Theta one over T is the average rate of change of this was one position in time and this was another. But this is not a position in the time. It's just the origin of your coordinate system is a total coincidence. Total coincidence of what angle this thing happened to be reading when we started, we didn't zero it, okay? And of when we released this thing and all kinds of other stuff, okay? That is it.
That is range is greater than theta with respect to T. Okay. Between T naught and T one. That equals delta theta over delta T. Of course, once we Pointed all this out, we gave you the right result, which is theta two minus theta one over two two minus t one. Okay. And then you got the result for that for your two points. Okay. Now, what does that correspond to in the graph? So correspond to these two points, right? Well. This point is T1 theta 1. This point is T2 theta 2. If you draw a right triangle from one point to the other, this hypotenuse is a line segment connecting these points. And to Sides are parallel to the coordinate axes. You see that this is going to be chalk is a bit blunt. If this is theta two minus theta one, that stuff like right, stuff down to that thing. What did I do wrong? Well, show me with your finger what variable I should have used for this type of thing. Uh, yeah. That's the theta again. Right. T2 minus T1 equals delta T, which comes out a lot better than that delta theta, which is blood chalk anyway. So that's what I naturally should have started writing. Okay. Even if I wasn't too into what I was doing. Okay. So anyhow, and then here we get Well, what do we get then if we divide delta theta by delta t? Just in terms of uh, this graph, this triangle. Slope, which is rise over run, not some formula you memorize. Not y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or theta 2 minus theta 1 over t2 minus t1. It's not a formula, it's a concept. It's a rise and a run. Okay, that's what slope is. Now there's a formula for it, but if you don't know what slope is in terms of rise and run and picture of a triangle on a graph, then you don't know what slope is. And you don't have the ability to connect it to derivative and all kinds of other stuff. Okay. And since Almost everybody that comes into my pre-calculus classes, if they know anything about slope, most of them do. I think it's a formula instead of an idea in a picture. Well, there's a problem here. Problem in our educational system. Okay, not taking a shot at anybody. Uh, the way they teach the course because there are always trade-offs. I sure wish people wouldn't make that one. Okay. Of course, the reason I wanted to write delta theta here is we go delta theta over delta t, but delta theta over delta t. 
Like you don't even have to look at it. Did the slope of that graph change much? Early in the semester, when we did in detail how these things and so forth, totally analogous to what this thing is doing. You got little tiny people in there making check marks and X's. Okay. And then they quickly put them on the graph, right? That's what's inside that. And apparently they're dead. So it was or at least. Namely, that case of COVID, that they were probably, um, and they're probably the source of COVID. Well, let's not get into that. I could spin all kinds of conspiracy theories here. <laughs> I publish them, people would start believing them. Um, okay, <laughs> if they fit what they wanted to hear, but that's how conspiracy theories go. Of course, it'd be difficult to distinguish. Okay, so we have. Delta theta over delta t, which is this, right? And what did you what did you get? You got some decimals. Here show me with your fingers. You got point what? Point nine five one. Which are you gonna use it? Point nine five one. Uh, okay, zero. That's not zero. That's not zero. And well, there's another one we don't use. Okay. Uh, okay, that's good. We want those three significant figures. Last one might not really be significant because there's a 20th of a second graininess to the data that we got, which will have an effect on the significance of that last figure. First two, I think, are pretty secure. Okay. And omega two bar, of course, that's going to be on this interval, right? And let's go ahead and color code this. Here's our result for this slope, this average angular velocity. Put that finger down for a minute. Um, and <laughs> uh, so omega two bar, of course, will be corresponding to this term. I'm not going to label it. There's not enough room, and we know what we're doing now. Okay, again, what you get? One point. Yeah, if figure if there's a one, it had to be a point. Zero. Four. Zero. Yeah, that's good. No, I, I kind of knew what you were saying there, even if you didn't say it. Right. Okay. So we got this. Okay, good. Now, can we determine an average angular acceleration? Okay, now. We calculate the difference as of uh, uh, the delta omega from 0 0.950 and it's radians per second. I should have written that and you should always write it. Always give quantities and units because otherwise you get confused about the units and get things totally wrong. You mix up centimeters and meters or something. Whatever. Newton centimeters and joules. Uh, if you're not careful. Uh, it's very easy to do that. Anyway, going from this to this, and that difference is 0 0.09 radians per second, right? So it's very clear what that is. Okay. Now, the picture that goes with this, because we got a terrible answer here, terribly, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it was ter terribly wrong. Okay. Uh, to calculate delta T, what we did was we got. 
subtracted this time interval from this time interval. Well, what if this time interval has been a little longer? Because, you know, where you click, okay, uh, influences both of these time intervals. Your average value of the angular velocity, your average omega, wouldn't have changed by much. But your time, your two time intervals would have changed by quite a bit. As a matter of fact, if this time interval was shorter than this time interval, you would have gotten a negative change in time if you thought the time intervals were times. Okay? So you really have to distinguish time intervals from times. And you just can't do that. Okay? T is the coordinate along this axis. Okay? And you got to have two coordinates along this axis, not two intervals along this axis. Does all that make sense? I hope. Make sure you understand it. <clears throat> okay, so what we can say is that velocity appears to be an almost linear function of time. That graph looks really straight. Okay, and there's very little change in angular velocity between here and here. Now, the change could be due to the graininess of the data. Uh, Again, only 20 points per second. So you know, we've got a couple of seconds here. We have probably about 20 points here and 20 points here, at least 15, 16. So you can think about whether that could explain why this is greater than this. Okay. And before we go on with this calculation, let me say, looks like this thing's speeding up. If it is, friction isn't the only source of torque. What else might be going on? Well, I'll tell you. And oh, you see all this. If you're writing profound words, you want them to show up. No way. Okay. What else might be going on? This system's not perfectly. Horizontal, perfectly level, perfectly balanced. I can guarantee you that the potential energy is either increasing a little or decreasing a little as this thing goes through that approximate half rotation. Okay. Whether that's a significant factor that explains why this is different than this, or if this can be just easily explained by the graininess of the data, I don't know. I could measure it. We can release that thing at one point and see how much its velocity changes because it'll probably change. Probably won't be perfectly balanced. Okay. So we could actually measure this. You know, we're over time. You're going to have to quit here in a couple minutes. But Bob, you'll probably have things to do. Um, and if you do, you're welcome to stop up. Okay. <laughs> if you got to do something, I was watching the other video. Okay. Well, Oh, yes. After this, in calculating delta omega over delta two, we need two times. I want to use this time right in the middle of this interval and this time right in the middle of this interval because velocity is, the angular velocity really is changing, but not at a great rate. Then the straight line is pretty close to the actual graph if you have a linear. Quantity between here and here. Okay. So your slope, um, you know, the slope, in other words, slope here is very close to the slope here. Slope should be pretty uniform along here. The rate of change ought to be pretty uniform. And it follows that the average value will occur at the midpoint of the interval. Okay. If water is flowing into a bucket, at a constant rate. And the amount of water in the bucket goes from five gallons to eight gallons in 30 seconds. Okay. And that rate, now the resulting rate, uh, which would be one tenth of a gallon per second, 
is accurate throughout. And even if uh, I, I don't want to get into it, but it's too much explanation. I'll probably use better analogy. Okay, right here would be R2 omega. So this would be, call it, can't use T. Well, here's our delta. Okay. And here's our delta omega. So your delta T here, from the numbers you've given me, I think you got about 1.7 seconds from here to here. Well, then the interval from here to here is going to be about half of that, around 0.8 or 0.9 seconds. Okay. So And I'm waving my hands over that. There's your delta T in the midpoint. You can figure out where that is because you can figure the midpoint of each interval. I got some other zeros here. Okay. There's your angular velocity. Now we spent a lot of time on this. So you really want to review it. You really want to understand how all this is related to the basic stuff. And I recommend you really maybe list the most basic concepts that you've encountered in the course. And you hardly define what are the main relationships and what follows those concepts. At least you want to be thinking about that when you read or do problems. Doggone it, get on there. Okay. <clears throat>